Whenever I see people discussing what they consider the insane arcs of Classroom of the Elite Year 1, I always see two in particular, and that is Volume 4, aka the cruise ship arc, which is understandable because there is a lot of insane moments that happen. We find out about Kay's dark past. We see Kay get bullied by Manabe's group. We get the infamous scene of Anna Koji telling Kay to spread her legs. We also got to see how Anna Koji was able to pass this exam, which included a lot of layers. Like this plan wasn't very simple. It was very well thought out. And of course, we get also the thing with Ichinose in which he actually did know how Anikoji's plan worked which is really surprising because that just shows how smart Ichinose is and it's very clear even for Anikoji that he does need to keep an eye on Ichinose because she's not dumb she is very intelligent and of course the other arc slash volume that a lot of people consider the insane arc of year one is obviously volume seven aka the rooftop arc or the Anikoji versus Ryuin arc anybody that has read that volume knows why many people consider that arc to be insane I mean we got to see a fight between between Aniko and Ryuin. We also got to see how Ryuin was willing to do anything to get the information as to who was the mastermind of Class D and he did this by torturing K, which was by bringing back her trauma of being bullied which is a very very insane thing to do. No normal person would ever do that. Bring back someone's trauma just to get information. But that just goes to show you just how much of an insane person Ryuin is. So yeah, there's a lot of reasons why many people consider these two arcs the most insane arcs of year one. Because of just how unexpected or unpredictable these arcs were going to be. We didn't know what was going to happen until we finished the volume. But there is another arc that I see a lot of people not really talk about or don't really mention it. I see few discussions or see some people say saying how this is also one of the insane arcs of year one but not a lot of people talk about it and this is volume 10 aka the in-class voting arc this arc i also consider to be one of the insane arcs of year one because when i was reading this volume for the first time i mean i was just really excited to see what was going to happen next as the arc continued because there were just so many interesting things that were going on there were so many insane moments happening every chapter it was just a really insane read and i really did enjoy it because it's one of those things where like i just couldn't stop reading like I literally finished that book within like a day or so a day and a half because that's how good the arc was I couldn't stop reading it I wanted to see what was going to happen from beginning to end and today I'll be talking about why I consider this one of the most insane arcs of Classroom DLE in year one now of course warning because this is something that is going to be adapted in the Classroom DLE anime which is season three so if you don't want to get spoiled as to what happens in this arc and you're just waiting for season three to arrive then you have been warned because I am going to be talking about this arc which includes spoiling some big moments or some big things that happen in this arc so yeah with that out of the way let's just begin so the in-class voting arc is a very interesting arc because this test pretty much was something that was not really expected you see what really makes this arc really interesting is just that how everyone was not really a huge fan of this test not even the teachers Chama Shiro sensei when she's announcing this test is not really a huge fan of and a lot of people could tell that she did not want to do this test and the main reason why is because well this test kind of contradicts what the school's purpose is you see the school's purpose the advanced nurturing high school the whole purpose of getting into the school is making sure that you pass every single test and of course if you fail these tests and don't pass you get expelled that's pretty much how the school has been functioning and of course if you do pass the exams you could have a chance of getting into class a and the reason why that's important is because if people are in class a they have a higher chance of getting to the dream school or the dream job that they want that's pretty much why a lot of people go into the school because if you get to class a you could have a better chance in having a better future for your life but that is not the case for this test this test pretty much just seems a case in which the class has to get rid of someone even if they haven't failed at the moment they still have to get rid of someone in order to pass this exam and of course this creates tension because now class d aka anakoji's class now has to figure out who they need to get rid of in order to pass this exam of course they could save that person who's about to be expelled if they have 20 million points but the problem is is that anakoji's class doesn't have 20 million points points and the way the in-class voting exam works is that each student is given praise votes and criticism votes praise votes are pretty much you giving a person who you want to keep in the class and criticism votes is somebody you want to get rid of of course these two things the praise votes and the criticism votes interfere with each other so the amount of praise that you get minus the amount of criticism votes you get will be the result of course you won't know what the result is until the day it's announced as to who will get expelled but it is something that is worth mentioning 
And the person who gets the most praise votes is actually the person that gets a reward, which is a protection point. The way this protection point works is that if you happen to fail the upcoming exam and it's most likely you're the person that's going to be expelled, you can actually use this protection point to save yourself. So basically it's kind of like a pass card where even if you happen to fail in the upcoming exam or in a future exam, it doesn't really matter because as long as you have this protection point, you are not going to be expelled. But also one thing to also mention is that you can actually use the praise votes to vote for other people from different classes. Classes. So of course, if you happen to have somebody you know, you want to help them out, you can use that praise vote for them as well, even if they're from a different class. Of course, the criticism votes, you can't do that, but only praise votes, you can actually do that. So a very simple exam, there isn't a lot of things that you need to remember or there's any loopholes. But once again, this is something that most of the people did not want to do because they didn't want to get rid of someone just like that. If they were to fail, then it's understandable why they would get expelled. But the fact that they have to vote for someone to get expelled, yeah, it's something that a lot of them don't really want to do. But as a result, they're probably going to have to do it anyways. And sadly, we won't really know who is the one who actually approved this test until volume 11. So sadly, I won't be saying who did actually approve this exam. But it's very obvious that it's a higher up from the school. And that's all I'm going to say. But yeah, of course, now class D needs to figure out who they need to get rid of. But if there's one person who doesn't want anybody to leave is Harata. At this time, Harata was still wanting everyone to pretty much stay at the school. And in this test, it was very clear that he wanted to do something in order to prevent the person from being expelled, even though it was impossible unless they had 20 million points. But let me remind you, they didn't have that. But for some reason, Hirata was still determined to make sure that this person didn't get expelled. Even after Anakoi told him that he needed to face reality, that someone was going to get expelled. Like there was no denying that. But Hirata was still in denial and was trying to find out a way to actually save this person from expulsion. If you want to know why he's doing that, I highly recommend you watch my video on Hirata because I do talk about why he does have this mentality of wanting to save everyone and help everyone out no matter what. Because there is things that happen in his past that I'm not going to get into because I already made a video about it. So go check that out if you are interested in but it isn't just class d that's dealing with their own situations it's also class a class b class c and that's what i really enjoy about this arc is that all the classes are involved it's not just class d or anakoji anymore it's literally entire classes that have to deal with this exam and i'm really glad this arc shows us how they're dealing with it and what they are actually doing in this exam for example sakinagi's class aka class a obviously she's planning something but we won't know until almost the end of the volume Class B, Ichinosis has her own situation in which she actually doesn't want anybody to get expelled and she almost has the points in to make sure that no one gets expelled from her class. The problem is that she only has 16 million points and of course you need 20 million points to save that person. So she needs 4 million points. However, there is one person that actually does have the points needed to save her class, which is Nagumo. Nagumo does have the remaining 4 points. However, Nagumo actually wants something in exchange for the points and he wants Ichinose to be in a relationship with him. Yep, that's right. Nagumo literally wants Ichinose to be his girlfriend in order to get the points, which Ichinose is not really a fan of because while she does need the points, she also is debating if she should even do it because she doesn't even like Nagumo. And of course, as she states in this volume, that she only thinks a relationship can happen if the two people like each other. If one person likes somebody, but the person doesn't like them back, then that relationship is doomed to fail. We also have Ryuin's class in which it's obvious that people want to get rid of Ryuin. People from class C want Ryuin to be gone. And of course, his group like Ibuki, Shizaki, Albert, they don't want him to leave because they think he's an important person for the class. And he He's the only person that could get class C to be in class A. And even Hiyori, which I've already stated numerous times, Hiyori doesn't mind Ryuin. She wants Ryuin to be the leader of class C because she also thinks that Ryuin is the only person that could get her class to get to class A. So obviously there's that whole situation in which the majority of the class wants to get rid of Ryuin, but of course there's people who don't want Ryuin to go away because he's the only person that's able to get class C to class A. So yeah, that's what makes this arc really great because you want to know what's going to happen with the other classes. How are they going to solve their own issues? And of course, this is what makes it even more interesting because you want to know how this is all going to end. And this is where the insanity begins. I mean, it was already insane, but this is just becomes even more insane as you keep reading this arc. So Anakoji finds out that he is being targeted by his class. Like his class has decided to get him to be the one to get expelled. 
expelled. Now, what's really interesting is that Anakuri is not scared. He's not afraid. He just says literally like, oh, okay. And then he proceeds to start his plan because if there's one thing you should know about Anakuri is that he always has plans. So one of the first things he does is find out who is actually the one who came up with this plan to get rid of him. And he calls someone that obviously does know a lot of people. And this is Kushida. Now, at first, Kushida doesn't want to give the information, but this all changes when she asks Anakuri what he's going to do to make sure he doesn't get expelled. Anakuri doesn't want to say it because it's a secret to which then Kushida proceeds to tell Anakoi who actually is the one who came up with this plan and this was Yamauchi Beak. Now you may be wondering why Yamauchi, why does he want to get rid of Anakoji? Well it's because he's doing this because of Sakinagi. Yeah Sakinagi has obviously something to do with this and Yamauchi being the low IQ person he is decides to go along with this because apparently he has a thing for Sakinagi and he believes that Sakinagi has a thing for him where in reality that's not true and he should have known better because I think at this point everyone has become very cautious of Sakinagi and it's very clear that Sakinagi is a person you shouldn't really be trusting but we are talking about Yamauchi here, and he's not smart, so it's very obvious why Sakinai was able to get him to do this plan. This doesn't come out of nowhere, like, it's been hinted that Yamauchi has been doing something with Sakinagi ever since Volume 9. Like, there have been moments in which these two have talked in the past, so it's very clear that Sakinagi was using Yamauchi. But this is only part of Anakoji's plan. The next part was getting Horikita involved, and the way he did this was because obviously he knew that Horikita will only listen to her older brother Manabu, so Anakoji told Manabu to arrange a meeting in which he and her talk and the point of this discussion is for Horikita to finally get some courage from her brother because her brother states how she needs to do her own things and that she's not going to get anywhere if she continues to try to be like him and of course this gets Horikita to realize that maybe her brother does have a point maybe she does need to follow her own path because she's not going to be like him and he also states how she's not also going to be like Anna Koji she needs to be her own person and of course this leads to Horikita deciding what she needs to do and of course the main thing she needs to do right now is figure out what she has to do for this test. So the next day as class ends, this is where Horikita jumps in and tells everyone that he needed to talk about the in-class voting. Now Hirata decides for whatever reason to tell Horikita that this is not a good idea but she insists on talking as she states that the person that they should eliminate is Yamauchi. Obviously Yamauchi gets angry but Horikita keeps talking saying how Yamauchi has pretty much not improved at all like he still hasn't really done anything that is going to be beneficial for that class. Not only that but she also states how Yamauchi is a traitor of the class because he's been working with Sakinagi in order to get Anakoji expelled. And of course this shocks the class and of course Yamauchi starts panicking and starts you know denying that this is true but Horikita says that no. She knows all about his plan but not only that but she also mentions Kushida as Kushida is also the person responsible for trying to get people to vote for Anakoji which also leads to Kushida panicking because she was not expecting Horikita to also mention her as well. But, I mean, it was very obvious that Horikita was going to mention her as she was also involved in the plan of getting Anakoji expelled. Remember, it was during this time where she still was playing the nice girl, so of course this would have damaged her reputation. And as this keeps going on, Hirata just keeps getting frustrated and angry and tells Horikita to shut up, but Horikita still is not stopping and she's continuing to talk. And at this point, it was just a breaking point for Hirata because he kicks a desk right and tells her to just please be quiet but in a very angry tone and this shocks the class not only does it shock the class it shocks the teacher Chawashira it shocks Horikita because this was completely unexpected but this also shocks Anakoji which to be fair, I mean, I was kind of surprised, but kind of wasn't because, I mean, this was something that even I wasn't expecting Harata to do because Harata's always been like the gentle, calm dude, but that was not the case in this situation. Harata was pretty much a completely different person. And even though a lot of people were still not really sure if they should really vote for Yamauchi, this did show that Yamauchi's plan was exposed. And of course, this would not lead to now people trying to figure out their own ways to deal with this whole thing, which was figuring out who they actually want to get rid of. We then fast forward to the day of the test in which it was going to be discovered who gets expelled. Yamachi was confident, like he was very confident, which made him not likable at all. Like this whole part of him being confident that he wasn't going to get expelled was laughable because as a result, no surprise, Yamachi is the one who gets expelled. And he's shocked because there was actually a thing that happened before this day in which Yamachi was actually talking to Sakinagi, in which Sakinagi actually promised him that she was going to give all the praise votes from her class to him. Now, 
he didn't do this in a contract or there was not really like anything signed. So he just took her word at value, even though this was something that he sh probably shouldn't have done. But as a result, Saiki Nagi didn't do that and just pretty much lied to him. And as a result, Yamauchi has a huge meltdown in the class to the point where everyone just feels sorry for him. But there is one person who tells him to just pretty much leave already, and that is Koenji, unsurprisingly. Yamauchi, because he's pissed, still decides to get a chair and try to throw it at Koenji. But Koenji, because he's a very strong individual, isn't going to let that happen. And as a result, pretty much Yamauchi has to be kicked out immediately. There's still more because we learn about the other results from the other classes. In class A, Sakinagi makes sure that Katsuragi's right hand man gets expelled because that was the only person left that was actually in support of Katsuragi because remember Katsuragi and Sakinai had like a faction battle as to who is going to be in control of class A but in the end Sakinai was in control of class A and she wanted to get rid of everyone that was still supporting Katsuragi and as a result she got rid of Katsuragi's right hand man and in terms of class B and C, well, it was kind of very interesting how they ended up with this whole test. As a result, class B actually did not get anyone expelled. And the reason why that didn't happen was because they actually did do work with class C. So we go back to, I believe, a day before the test was concluded in which Ichinose and two people from Ryuin's group, Ibuki and Shizaki, are talking with Anakoji to figure out what they should do. Towards the end, it's revealed that Ichinose made a deal with Ibuki and Shizaki in which she said that she would use all her praise votes from her class to Ryuin because remember Ryuin was still at risk of getting expelled because the majority of class C wanted to get rid of Ryuin and Ishizaki and Ibuki promised to use the points that Ryuin was saving to give it to Ichinose to complete her 20 million points so that no one gets expelled from her class and if you want to figure out who was the one who got the most praise votes in class D it's unsurprisingly and according now he didn't really do anything because in reality he actually didn't do anything it was actually Sakinagi that did this you see when Sakinagi was telling Yamauchi that she was going to use all her praise votes to him in reality she was going to use her praise votes to Anakoji because she knew that Anakoji was going to get targeted because remember Sakinai still wants to battle with Anakoji and of course if he gets expelled then she won't have the battle that she wants so desperately. Now you may be saying that there's no more insane moments towards the end right? Well you're completely wrong because there is one more thing that happens towards the end of the volume which is something that even I wasn't expecting so there is this private meeting that Sakinagi and Anakoji have in which they're talking about the results of the in-class voting exam. However their meeting gets interrupted by an adult in which his name is Tukishiro. Now, it's very obvious that he's not supposed to be there as he states that he was looking for the school. However, Sakinagi points out how the school was in the opposite direction. So therefore, it's very clear that he actually missed the school on purpose. And Tukishiro responds by kicking Sakinagi's cane, which almost leads to her falling to the ground. Now, of course, Anakoji saves her because this was completely unexpected and Sakinagi doesn't deserve to be treated like that. And even I, when I read that, I had to reread it because I was like shocked that this even happened. Which let me remind you, Sakinagi is disabled. She needs that cane in order to walk. But luckily, Anakoji saves her. But the only thing is, is that Tukishiro decides to hit Anakoji. And of course, he wasn't on guard because he was too busy protecting Sakinagi. But he takes the punch and Tukishiro pins him to the wall and tells him how he needs to get out of the school or else it's going to become really ugly and tells him how his father sent him to the school to make sure that he gets expelled. Of course, Anakoi doesn't do anything because he's worried that if he does do something, there might be cameras in which they could use that against him in which as a result he could get expelled from the school and with that that's how volume 10 ends so pretty insane stuff that happened in this arc i really enjoyed this volume there were so many moments that really just caught me off guard or just completely shocked me like i was really wanting to figure out what's what's going to happen next and i think the ending was a good ending because it makes you want to read volume 11 because you want to know what else is going to happen in volume 11 so yeah one of the most insane arcs in classroom the elite year one of course volume 7 volume Volume 4 are also insane but I think volume 10 also deserves to be at the top spot of insane arcs because this arc was really good and with that that's pretty much the entire video I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time